The black swan. Okay, so anyway, the point I'm making is stress is your friend. The body is designed to grow under conditions of stress. It doesn't matter what that stress is. Stress is, tells the body it's time to grow. This is why one of the most powerful anti-aging tools you can ever use, the mo one of the most powerful anti-aging tools you could ever use is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Because when you fast, your body goes into stress mode. And it builds muscles so you can go out and get some food. Well, logically, if that's anti-aging, what do you think pro-aging is? Yeah. Right? What we do eight times a day, sometimes more. Okay? So the point is, is when the body has slight, slight amount of stress, the correct amount of stress, it, it gets the message, it better grow. It better build. And when we talk about reversing degenerative disease, we're talking about building. We're talking about being a bodybuilder. You're bodybuilders if you want to reverse degenerative disease. And bodybuilders make a good living reversing breakdown. They don't call it degenerative disease. They're not degenerating, really, but they're going into build-up mode. They're going into build-up mode. There's two great movements in the body. There's two great movements in the body. There's two great movements in the life. Ancient people called it yang and yin. In the body, you have these two great movements of breakdown and build-up. If anybody's a chemist, any chemist in this room? You guys brought me a projector, but nothing to write on. Or nothing to write with. Anything to write with? Guys, I don't have anything to write with. Okay, but let me, I don't need that, but if you could get me a pen, that would be awesome. A marker of some kind. Um, they're going to get a marker. There's two great movements in the body. You have one movement that goes towards build up and one movement that goes towards breakdown. It's like in your business. In business, you've got two great movements. They're called in the red and in the black. Spending and making, spending and earning, right? And in business, it doesn't matter if it costs you a million dollars if you're making two million, right? What matters? Bottom line. That's what matters. You're always spending in business. You're always making in business. What matters is the bottom line. Body's the same way. It's always spending. That's breaking down. That's how when the body breaks down, it's spending, really. It's releasing energy. And then there's build up. That's making money. When you're young and you're beautiful and you're healthy and you got a little, or you're five years old, you know how we look at five-year-old kids and we're like, oh my God, where did I go? Just like that, you know? What you're looking at is, I do that. You're just looking at him. You're seeing build up in its most primal state, the highest, the highest degree of build up in the black that you can imagine. That kid is so in the black, you just, you just want to get some of that energy by looking at him. And then you go look at somebody who's degenerating, somebody who's breaking down. You know what the difference is? That difference is in the red and in the black. When you, somebody's coming out of the hospital, they're in breakdown mode. When somebody has cancer, they're in breakdown mode. When somebody has degenerative disease, they're in breakdown mode. Our job should be to figure out how to reverse that breakdown mode. How to reverse that breakdown and turn it into build up in the most powerful, one of the most powerful ways, almost like little magical pixie dust that turns on the building in, in uh, chemistry or biology, we call it anabolism. Anabolism, anybody here anabolic steroids, anabolic hormones, right? Anabolism means building up. Catabolism means breaking down. Anabolism and catabolism together make up metabolism. And if you've ever heard of a metabolic disease, which is what all diseases are, what you have is a in the red disease. You have a disease where you're in the red. That's what a metabolic disease is. I love this new, not new, that came out about 15 years ago. Metabolic syndrome, they call it. They always have a syndrome. You know what a syndrome is? It's when they have a bunch of things happening. And it's all in one thing, so they call it a syndrome. Metabolic syndrome always cracked me up because that means everything's going wrong. Your whole body's going wrong because everything is metabolic. Metabolic is the sum total of all the chemistry in your body. So our job should be to reverse the breakdown process, turn it into a building up process, and the number one, or the pixie dust that turns on the building process is stress. How do you like that? You think it's important? Say, oh my God, I should be Superman, right? I got so much darn stress. It's not right. Ah, there's a catch to it. There's a catch to it. You see, stress occurs within a context of rest. See, the body likes stress in short bursts and then long, luscious rest. At eight, we should be working one day a week. If you worked one day a week, you would love your job. If you worked only two hours a week, you'd be like, no, I want to stay longer. I want more. No, two hours, I'm not going to be back for another, right? That's what we should be doing. It's not work that we hate. We love work. We just don't want to work 40 hours. <laughs> just I love it. You know, I want to work for maybe six hours. 
five hours, you know? The body loves a little bit of stress and a lot of rest. A lot, long, that's the way we were born, or that's the way we grew up. On the African savanna, many years ago, hunter-gatherers, they would go out hunt, it would, they'd have a lot of stress, and then they'd kick back and eat their wildebeest for a while. And they'd have a lot of rest, and it was only when agriculture came around that we started to have to really work. That's when, we, that's when you had to really till the fields. Our bodies aren't built that way. Our bodies are not built the way we're treating our bodies in so many different ways. This is the problem with sugar. Our body's not built to handle sugar. It didn't have sugar in the African savanna. There was no fructose. And people talk about how wonderful fruit is. There were no, there were no big apples on the African savanna. We were lucky if you had a berry. You know, that's the kind of sugars we need. We're not living in a, an appropriate way for, our bio, for the way our biology developed. Our biology developed to have certain things to, uh, so that certain things would trigger the growth response. Why would stress trigger a growth response? It's survival. It's built in so the, the animals that survived were the ones who grew when there was stress. The animals who didn't grow, they didn't have descendants like us. It's the way biology works. So. We're designed to handle, to, not handle, to grow under certain conditions of stress. And by the way, if you don't want to lose your mind, more Alzheimer's disease, you get older, you get forgetful, do crossword puzzles. <laughs> right? Learn a new language. Study something different. There's something that happens when we get old. It happens to men, it happens to women, but I, and it happens to young people too. And I call it old man's disease. Okay? But it happens to women and it happens to kids. Old man's disease, my, I named it after my dad. I discovered it a while ago. He was old. Old man's disease is when you know everything, everything. Nobody can tell you anything. You know exactly how it is. That's called old man's disease, right? And women have it and kids have it. Everybody has it, right? Right? So you must know somebody with old man's disease, yes? Oh, okay. You've been called out there, buddy. All right. All right. All right. But the point is, is that we shrivel. We shrivel up when we get we become ossified and calcified and fossilized when we have old man's disease. And as we get older and we know everything, we want to be open to new things, always open to new things, always hearing different things. So you want to be, be you want to be able to take in, you want to be able to understand this balance. First of all, you want to be able to uh, understand this balance between stress and rest. Okay? So I don't want to, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Stress a little bit, work, or stress a little bit, rest a long period of time. In the gym. If you ever spend more than 15 minutes in the gym a day, you are doing way, you must have a lot of time to kill because you don't need to spend more than 15 minutes a day in the gym if you do it right. If you're doing sit-ups and you're doing 200 sit-ups, you're, you're doing them the wrong way because if I show you how to do sit-ups, you won't even be able to do two. <laughs> two. One, maybe. And let me tell you something else. For people who can't work out, you can get a great, you don't need P90X, you can get a great butt and leg workout just getting out of a chair if you do it correctly. You want to try it? Watch this, okay? Watch this. She's not even going to be able to do this. Get out of chair, but get out really slowly. No, no, super slowly. Take 30 seconds to get up. Take 30 seconds. Ah, oh. oh, I see. <laughs> do it one time. One time. Just do it one time. That's all you'll need. You'll get the best butt workout ever. Do it once a day. Once a day. Once a day. Do it with curls. Do it with a five pound set of dumbbells. Get a five pound set of dumbbells. Do super slow. Super, super slow. You won't believe. You won't even be able to do two of them. Three of them, and you'll be done in less than five minutes. That's the kind of stress, that's the kind of stress the body responds to. <clears throat> that's the kind of stress the body responds to. Quick bursts of it. If you're gonna run, you don't need to run far. Sprint. Sprint for 15 seconds. Watch what happens. That's the kind of workout that you want to do. Are you are you laughing at me or with me? I can't tell. <laughs> with me, okay. Good. That's the, kind of, that's the kind of stress that you want. Quick burst of stress followed by long rest. Okay, so remember, it's four, it's four parts. Rest, you, we don't need any help with rest. Although maybe we do. Maybe we do, unfortunately, need some help with rest, right? All right that's, and that, maybe this is a good thing to, to mention real quickly. Degenerative disease is a manifestation, a visible manifestation, a breakdown, uh, an accelerated breakdown, spending too more than you're making. You're in the red, right? But what is it that causes it? I talked about the food getting into the body. It's all a defensive reaction. We are, our bodies are in emergency mode. We have two modes, we have, uh, there's lots of pairs of modes of being. One is relaxation and rest. But another one, I'm sorry, one is build up and break down. 
Another one is relaxation and rest, or, uh, stress and relaxation. Relaxation tells the body to grow. Relaxation tells the body it's safe. We, if we're gonna have a degenerative disease, your job is to tell the body it's safe, like it was a baby, like it was a baby. Now you can't, you can talk to it, you certainly can talk to your body, but when I say to tell the body you're safe, I'm talking about chemically. To create a chemical terrain where the body is safe. It's told it's safe. Does this make sense? Any, the brain is constantly reading the blood. Your brain is a dumbass. Okay? It's in your skull. It doesn't know what's happening. It's in your skull. And it's reading the blood to determine what's happening. That's how it knows what's happening. The blood is going through and it's reading the chemistry. And when it reads the chemistry that tells it there is some kind of alert or some kind of emergency, it goes into safe mode. It turns everything into safe mode. You know how in your computer, when your computer's ready to crash, it will, before it totally crashes, it'll go into safe mode? And it's like you can just barely do certain things, but you can't do everything? That's what happens to the body. When the brain thinks it's under attack, or it thinks it's starving, or it thinks it's some kind of stress, it goes into safe mode and it will not go into building until it's out of safe mode. So our job is to get it out of safe mode and pretty much everything I'm talking about with nutriate, nutriate, move and rest, uh, nutriate, respirate, move and rest is getting the body, the brain to think the body's safe. Your job, everybody here, if you're dealing with degenerative disease it's even more so, but everybody here is to make your body feel safe. Can you relate to this? When you have high blood pressure, this is your body in an emergency mode. When you have blood clotting, this is a classic sign of a body under attack. When you have inflammation of any kind, you are witnessing the defense department trying to protect the body. And under these conditions, the body will not grow. Under these conditions, the body will not repair. And un under these conditions, our birthright of regeneration will not occur when the body is under attack. Many of you in this room, if not all of us in this room, have, are doing things that create an environment where our body is freaked the hell out. All right, do you guys get this? Freaked out, freaked out. And I can tell by looking, but you guys are in it and you know. If you have high blood pressure, your body is freaking out. This is why nutrient respirate, move and rest work so well. They tell the body it is safe. It is safe. So when you take rest, and I said, I'm telling you this because of the rest period, we really have to know how to rest. How ironic. We really need to know how to rest. You want to know how to rest correctly? Go look at your baby when he's sleeping. That's how you rest. You want to know how to breathe correctly? Watch your baby when he's sleeping. Babies, babies those innocent, they have no idea what awaits them in the world. Right? They are still oblivious. That's why, that's why we love babies. They're still oblivious. Well, we have to learn to rest like a baby. And one of the most important things is breathing. And it's the simplest thing. It is so simple to breathe, but you turn on the body's relaxation response with the breath. It's called the parasympathetic nervous system. You have two nervous systems. Remember, there's two great movements in the body at all times. You've got stress and you've got rest. You've got breakdown and you've got build up. You have a parasympathetic and you have a sympathetic nervous system. These are two nervous systems. The nervous system of stress is the nervous system that gets you ready to run from a saber-toothed tiger. It closes down your blood vessels so that more pressure will come out into all of, the blood will come out at a higher pressure to more organs so they get more oxygen. And it will clot your blood in preparation for being eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. That's what blood clotting is. When the body clots, it, when the blood clots, it's clotting so it doesn't hemorrhage to death when you get bit by that saber-toothed tiger. It also happens when your body thinks it's gonna be, when your body's about to be cut by a surgeon. That's why if you've ever had surgery, what's the drug they give you when you come out? It's called Coumadin, and it's a nasty, nasty drug. It's a blood thinning drug because your body is freaked out. It is freaked out. And so what happens? It closes up on the blood vessels. There's these generic things that happen into the, to the body when it's under stress, and lack of oxygen is a major stress. Major stress. And nobody breathes correctly. We don't breathe correctly, so we pretty much go throughout the day telling our bodies, stay in safe mode, don't grow, don't repair, degenerate. And then we wonder why we have anxiety, why we have panic attacks, why we're freaked out. We're contracted. Every time you're wounded emotionally, psychologically, you get into a little contraction. Think about something that's unpleasant right now and you'll notice that you're contracting. 
Do you notice this? You know how they say when you're a drunk driver never